So I must admit that I have a bit of an obsession with uncovering just what it is that makes premiership teams tick. I pour over the stats and try to find some common denominators, some defining markers that measure up for each side that is fortunate enough to hold the Premiership Cup aloft at the end of September. But there was always something missing, a stat that I couldn't find or a number that didn't quite add up. That is, until I discovered the content at Wheelo Ratings, who just so happened to have everything I was looking for and more, with the added bonus that I could download their data via an Excel spreadsheet. Let's dive in and have a look at the results. Welcome to AFL Insight. After analysing 13 years worth of data, I came up with six premiership parameters. First up is territory. Get in the game on your terms and in the forward half of the ground is half the battle. And we can measure this by metres gain differential per game. Secondly, we have inside 50 differential per game. Believe it or not, there are multiple teams who finished 2024 with a positive differential in territory and a negative differential in inside 50s. So not only is it imperative to get the game going your way, teams also need to get the ball in a bit deeper to create scoring opportunities. A few months back, I did a video which charted every finals winning team from 2000 through to 2023. And every single premiership winning team had a positive inside 50 differential of at least plus 1.8. If your team can't get it in more consistently than their opposition, they're just not winning the flag. The third parameter is Mark's inside 50 differential. You either need to have some key forwards that can clunk the ball like Hawkins and Cameron, Danaher and Hipwood, Rewalt and Lynch, or have a defensive pairing that can stop the opposition's best forwards like Lever and May. The fourth measure is shots at goal differential. It seems impossible that this would be the case, but again, there are teams who have both a positive differential in inside 50s and marks inside 50s, but a negative differential in shots at goal. Now the first four parameters focus more on the attacking side of things and being able to get the ball and the game played in the forward half of the ground. But winning the ball back has become just as important. So intercept differential per game is our fifth parameter. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, is what happens once a team creates those turnovers and intercepts the ball. Scoring from turnover has become a crucial part of modern footy, with five of the last six premiers ranked number one in the league for this differential, whilst the other was ranked second. A highly contested and pressure-filled game causes mistakes, and the team that can capitalise on those mistakes are far more likely to finish the season higher up the ladder. So let's plug in all of our premiers and see how they rated in each measure. The 2024 Lions were dominant in every measure except for intercepts, but still had a positive differential in each category. The 2023 Pies were less convincing, which led to a closer grand final result. But still, they also had a positive differential in each measure. The 2022 Cats were clearly the most dominant Premier of the last decade and a half, posting huge numbers in all categories. The 2021 Ds were also strong across each indicator. Richmond's back-to-back -back campaigns in 2019 and 2020 saw them have a positive differential in each parameter. What's interesting is that the Tigers' numbers in 2018 were at their strongest across their dynastic run, but they failed to make the grand final. The 2018 Premier in West Coast would also have green lights across the board. The Tigers' first flag in 2017 had positive differentials in each category. There was no data for scores from turnover in 2016, but I'm sure the Dogs would have rated well in this area as their scrappy style laid the foundation for Richmond's all-out ground ball attack. The Doggies were less dominant in turnover and marks inside 50, but still scraped in to have positive differentials in each measure. The Hawks trilogy was all green lights as they dominated the competition in every key area. 
And finally, the 2012 Swans were also strong across the board. Now, like me, you might be saying to yourself that there are probably eight or nine teams each year that have positive differentials in each of these key statistics. Not so, I'm afraid. Let's line up each team from 2024 alphabetically and eliminate them category by category. Instantly, we have eight teams eliminated as the Crows, Pies, Bombers, Suns, Demons, Kangas, Tigers, and Eagles would all fail the territory test, leaving us with our eight eventual finalists, as well as the Dockers and the Saints. When we move to our next category, we lose the Saints, the Blues, and the Giants, who would all register negative differentials for inside 50s. The Swannies lack of a reliable marking target inside 50 would see them eliminated in the next category as we made our way down to six clubs remaining. All six teams would survive the next round as all would record positive differentials in shots at goal. When it came to winning the ball back from the opposition, two teams would fall off the wagon, the Dockers and the Power, leaving us with just four teams remaining all of whom would have a clean sweep across the board. The Lions, who would win the flag. The Cats, who had a 25-point third quarter lead against the Lions in the prelim. And the Hawks and Dogs, who both barnstormed their way into September and looked capable of winning the whole thing. To me, the data stacks up pretty well and confirms what we are seeing with our eyes. If we load all of our teams back in, we can see that Frio were the only team with green lights in five of the six categories. The Swans, Power, Giants, Blues, Magpies, and surprisingly, the Suns, had positive differentials in four of the indicators. The middling Bombers and Saints had three green lights. Bottom five teams in the Crows and Demons only had one area of positivity, whilst our bottom three teams in the Kangas, Tigers, and Eagles had red lights across the board. So not only was this data telling us who the best teams were, it's clearly showing who the worst teams were. What's really interesting is recent form. Again, thanks to Wheelow ratings, if we look at these numbers across each team's last 10 games, we still have the same four teams with positive differentials in all categories. Fremantle also still had five green lights, but this time they are joined by the Saints, who finished the year strongly and knocked off the Cats, Swans and Blues in the process. The Power and Suns remain locked on four out of six measures completed, whilst the Giants and Blues would join the Bombers in having only three categories with a positive differential. Many are high on the Pies coming into this season, but their late season form was a concern, going five and five over their last 10 matches, with three of those victories by less than a goal. They would have positive differentials in only two of the key stats, with their negative seven inside 50 differential really standing out. The Crows remained on only one category lit up, and astonishingly, joining them was the Swans. Sydney had a positive differential of plus 2.3 metres gained per game, which was the only thing that saved them from having red lights across the board. They did have some beltings from Port and the grand final loss, which skewed the numbers, but they still only went six and six from their final dozen games of the year. The Demons joined the Cellar Dwellers over the final 10 games, as they did not record a positive differential in any of our Premiership parameters. So there you have it, folks. I'll be keeping an eye on these numbers and posting more about them as the season unfolds. It'll be interesting to see if the Swans and Pies can turn their form around with a fresh start in 2025. If the Blues and Giants can get back to where they were in 2023, and whether the Saints and Dockers can take the next step and push themselves into actual contenders. As always, thanks for watching, and if you like this sort of content, please make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.